90. Alright, so I'm going to cut this once I find out what's wrong with it. But basically, it's the base address, which is fine. Tools, that's like data structures. Like, why are you using the old value? This makes no sense. Okay, so f for some absolute random reason, this always happens. I don't know if it's me that's being an idiot or it's Chi Engine's default um, de um, address finding thing that sometimes changes a tiny bit and it screws up your entire thing. So what happens is you go to this address here, which is the same one as that one. So that's our player base, 2ED0CB50. Now, if you got a different version of Counter-Strike or any of the game, it'll be different. Um, and we get 94 as an offset. So as we found out, as I told you earlier on, or maybe you find out for yourself, 90 offset is our health. So as you can see here, we have 94. If we try and go into the game, let's just go and do that a little bit. Try and go into the game, where's 90, there it is. And do hurt me again, six. Guess what, we're down to 88, and our health is also down to 88, as you can see here. If we move eight bytes from that, we have number three, which is our team. So guess what, this is our correct value. We're happy with that. So let's close it. Well, let's, should we close that? or not. Leave this here for now because I think we'll need this later on. So close that bit because we don't need that. And this is our enemy base. Now if we went here, uh, let's try the same thing. As you can see this points to the same address here. Now another thing that we also found out um, on the earlier tutorials, I'm not going to go over this because this takes quite a bit of time, is we found out that the enemies are 10, um, let me have a think, 10, yeah from this address here, they're 10 away from each other, so they're 10 bytes away from each other. So uh, if you move up 10 bytes, you got the second enemy's uh, data, move on up 20, you got the third enemy, and so on, 30, 40, and so on. That's how you get all the enemy's data. So you will use that when we're looping through the entities. Okay, uh, I'm planning on making a tutorial later on uh, that will cover just uh, finding entities, and that will be much easier because this is uh, well-known information that I'm giving you out here and it's not really anything new and it, you you can apply it to other games but it's not that um, flexible anyways so we've got a player base and uh, this is the second one here is our enemy base so as you can see they both point to the same address which tells us that well it doesn't tell us that we have other enemies in there but it's something that we found out earlier on um, so we found the player base and getting the base entity, which is what we have. Mm -hmm -hmm. Seems fine, just checking out my notes quickly, guys, to make sure we're going the right way. Um, so we've checked the 90 and 98 match. Fine, we're happy with that. We have our base, and we have our player base, and we have our enemy entity base. Um, uh, now, what we're going to do for this one is we're going to grab the. Um, we've already got the number of players. Do we have the number of players? Uh, we do not have the number of players so something we need to grab so if we go on notepad here we're going to store some of this inf information um, as you can see I've got some of this information already stored here I'm going to delete what's not necessary and this was from the last tutorial you will see that all this information pretty much matches um, <clears throat> as I told you the entity loop distance is 10 so that's how far each enemy is away from each other uh, from the, the previous one we have the entity base as you can see here if we click on the player which you can see client DLL plus plus five three um there it is five three FB zero four fine and the enemy base is five three ignore this initial zeros five four D three two four okay um and that's fine. Don't worry if you don't understand this. You can always go back to the previous tutorials, and I talk a bit more about this information. For now, it's um, you just need to know the basics so we can make the hack work. Number of players in game. Uh, I found this one on the previous tutorial. It's simply by doing create new game, change number of players, scan for that number of players. So create new game, eight players, scan for for nine player uh, for nine players because includes eight bots plus me. So scan for the number of players, create new game, blah blah. Keep doing that until you've you've got uh, the one static value and, and this value is the one we use to loop through players so that we don't loop through 32 players whereas we could only have five players and that makes our hack very fast uh, the same way we'd we'd want it to be so fourth shoot um, this is not necessary this is from, from the previous tutorial 
and crosshair ID is also not necessary and we've got all the information that we need here and that's what we're going to work with now what we're missing is we're missing our XYZ coordinates so how f where is our players coordinate stored and we need that for the aimbot so XYZ offset so if you go into here and type CL P dump 1 this brings up I showed you guys this before this brings up the information that we use for the let me think for the trigger bar tutorial and this brings up all the information that you need for your player you can if you use two you'll come up with the second player and so on and that's the beauty of Counter-Strike or any source engine they give you this information which is really useful so if, if we look through here right uh, check my notes quickly we're looking for MVEC origin and what if you go on all debug and you search for that string you'll get the same the same value that you're looking for and MVEC origin is where our play is located so if we have a look now if you look I can't point to my screen right now but if you look if you look um, yeah so if I point it to where the bullet is MVEC origin so as you can see there if you look that value that keeps that is I'm at below below um, below MV ang abs rotation vector so hopefully that makes sense so as you can see it's their mvec origin vector and it's currently minus uh, 1409 for me uh, and it's got a couple of values in front of it so if I reposition as you can see that value changes so that's our player origin if you're familiar with source games you'll know that that's how that works so I have got MVEC origin vector. Another way of finding this out, by the way, guys, is by walking up and down a ladder, for example. I've showed you this in the previous cheat engine tutorial. Walk uh, up and down ladders and search for higher and lower values. So we're not going to do that, though. So MVEC origin, as you can see, is minus 1,581 right now, which is what we're going to search for. So search for minus 1,500. We're looking for float, by the way. So let's do a new scan. Float. Hopefully this will work. So minus thousand five hundred and eighty-one. Uh, just go point two zero. Hopefully that will give us what we want. And it doesn't work. Fuck's sake. Floats so it can always be a tricky thing. Yeah. So there we go. Minus a thousand five hundred and eighty-one. Is that correct? Let's have a look. Yep, that's correct. So we're looking for a point two. So we're going to change that a little bit. So it changes to minus a thousand. 678 let's look through our addresses is anything match uh, it does not um, because I don't want to search for all the additional values it has we're going to do another another method which is just as good uh, we're going to go into the thing that we stored earlier so if you open up the previous dissect data structure hopefully you didn't close it like I did and if you did follow the same steps as before if we go into here we know that it's, it's part of the player's information. We know the value is 1,000. Uh, let's have a look again. MVEC origin is minus 1,678. So we can look through the player's structure and hopefully we'll find it. So let's look for minus 1678. Minus 1678. So we're just looking at that. 1678. Minus 1678. So having a look. Um... Uh, and there it is. So as you can see, there, that, there's the value we're looking for. So as you can see, the offset is 25C. Now we could have found it through there, but uh, through searching, which works a lot of the time. But for some reason, uh, I don't want to go too into it because uh, it wastes a lot of time. But as you can see, it's there, and it's part of our player structure. And by finding it this way, it's much easier because you don't have to filter through all the stupid results, and you don't have to work through all those things. That way, we know straight away it's part of the player's offset, and we simply add the 25C. So X Y Z offset equals 25C. Okay, and that's what we need to know to, to know there. Uh, zero times 25C, uh, and then all these other values. This will probably be height, and this will be Z. Either way, it doesn't matter because our uh, input. So if you, if you have a look, you'll see that. If I jump, that one changes. So the third one is uh, height. So this is X, uh, Z, and Y for height. Uh, it depends how you deal with coordinates. I mean, there's many different ways of doing it. Um, so we have that information. The next thing we're going to do is going to get our view angle, so our angle rotation. So if you look again through where we were dealing with, let's go to a darker place so we can see our values easier here. Yeah, so if you look again, you can see M angle rotation vector just below MVEC origin. Um, and that's where that is. And that is our angles, our player's angles. And we're going to use that to rotate the player to where we want it to be. So in order to find that, that value, 
uh, we simply look for the value that matches. So just like before, hopefully this one will work better. So as you can see, I go all the way down, it's 89 exactly. As you can see there, uh, it's 89, and we're going to search for that value. So just minimize that again. Uh, is it minus 89 or just 89? Let's have a look. It's just 89, so 89, and we're looking for a float. There we go, we got 89. So if we go all the way up, it's minus 89. Okay, that's interesting. We look for minus 89. And we got quite a few values. Scan a couple of times just to make sure. Go back down. We have 89 exactly again. Okay. Take off the minus. And for some reason, well, not for some reason, but the value is pretty much the same. So um, what we're looking for now is technically the value that if we freeze it, if we freeze that value, we want to make sure if we freeze that value, so let's go do a final scan, hopefully it'll reduce them a little bit more. Uh, it didn't. So what we're looking for is the value that uh, basically freezes our, our view angles. So the one that we can change, and it's writable, that we can change in order to um, in order to modify our player's crosshair. So I'm going to start from the bottom here, you can do the same. I don't remember how I found it last time, but we're just going to take a chance here. Uh, we're going to start from the bottom, uh, and that's fine, just going to go all the way up here, uh, just go up there, it's fine. Yeah, start from the bottom here, and just freeze a bunch of them at once. Now this could lead the game to crash, hopefully that's not going to happen though. As you can see, straight away we found the right one, I think this is what I did last time, and it's what we're looking for. So as you can see, one of these values is our correct value, and we're going to find which one it is. So let's do all, uncomment all of them, and that one that's left isn't it. Uh, you can do a lot more at once if you like, just to make sure. So as you can see, one of these values is it. Good stuff, it's what we're looking for. Comment that one. That one isn't it. Let's comment another one of these. Guess what, that one was it. That one. Go here. And I think I remembered from last time, that's how I found it. That's why I went to the last results first, because I'm sure that's how I found it. Because I remember it was somewhere down the, the bottom of it. So as you can see, I can't go up and down. It snaps the... Um, the thing back into position so wherever I go it brings my angle rotation back to 31 because that's what it was locked in the thing so guess what that is our value for the angle rotation now we kind of want to find out uh, what are we looking for let me have a look until finding yeah so we kind of want to find out um, where this address is in relation to our player so we want to find out as an offset where that is so we want to look for the number 31 now if you look for it before um, until finding actually I believe that won't work because this is yeah it's an engine engine call so I got a little bit confused there and the reason why this is an engine call is because it's writing to the mouse well to the the players angles so that way it's done in engine and um, because it's only limited to us because if you're playing against a bunch of bots they don't have this they have their own built-in coordinates that change in a different way and we don't care about changing their own we care about changing our view angles so that we can aim at the enemy and so what we do now is we store this value so as you can see it's engine DLL plus 461 uh, A9C so it's a, a static address by itself so engine DLL plus that value which should hopefully work well as we'll find out later on. Uh, so alternatives for both, um, yeah. So alternatives, alternatives for both finding the uh, position and the um, and the rotation value is simply look for change values. That's generally the best way to do it. Or a slightly even better way is to go through the dissect data structure and hopefully finding that information. Of course, for view angles, you can't find that as it's part of the engine DLL. But it's all about just spending the time researching, and I'll cover that. Uh, hopefully in other tutorials as I know it's really important for some more difficult games so uh, we have that information we have alternatives for both search and known values fine and I think we get to the stage now of coding the aimbot uh, hopefully I, I apologize as I know I've skipped a couple of steps here and there but um, this is all stuff that I covered before and I really you know I know some of you guys will get bored some will will be like oh you didn't cover this bit but if you check the previous tutorials all this information is covered so we've got em everything that we want now and we just want to go into um, we just want to start coding the aimbot now hopefully so what we're going to do is I'm going to close uh, Counter Strike for now just so we have resources at our disposal leave ch cheat engine open because we may need something that we've forgotten 
I don't think so though. Um, and what we want to do now is, so I'm moving this around, it's a little bit slow. What we want to do now is start coding the aimbot. So 